3DS Max 2024 introduced a revamped slate material editor, now fully based on Qt, and brought along a few handy new features for working with materials. In this video, we'll take a look at some of these updates and share a few tips to improve your material workflow. The new slate material editor now has a dockable checkbox, so you can dock it anywhere in the UI, even right over the command panel. In the past, the hide unused node slots button was a per node toggle. Now it also sets the default behavior for new nodes. If you turn it on and pick the sphere in the scene, the material tree that loads will automatically hide any unused slots. This makes your shader trees cleaner by default. This material setup is a UDIM checker. Each UDIM tile gets a random color and displays its tile number in the center. As you can see, it uses a lot of nodes. But what if we could group all of this into a single map and only expose the controls we actually need? That's exactly what the new compound feature lets us do. Let me select the maps that we want to group together and right click and choose Package Nodes in Compound. All the selected nodes are now packaged inside a compound. The map that was originally connected to the nodes inside the compound is still connected through an automatically exposed slot. Let's name this compound UDIM Checker. Double clicking the compound lets you go inside and edit it. You'll see the path at the top showing where you are in the hierarchy. You can package nodes inside a compound to create a nested compound. Use the toolbar buttons to move up. And double click the node to go down between different compound levels. If you want to unpack a compound, right click and choose Unpackage Compound. Remember, L is the hotkey for layout. Among the maps, you'll see two purple boxes. Select one of them and press C to zoom extent selected. These are texture map input nodes, generated automatically when the compound was created. That's because those slots were connected to the float value map. Even though the source is the same, Max creates a separate input slot for each connection. But sometimes we don't need that. We might just want a single shared slot. In that case, just reconnect the nodes to one of the texture map input nodes and delete the others. You can see one of the extra slots is already gone. Also, the default slot name A, Minuend, doesn't really explain what it does. This value controls the text size for the number texture, so let's rename it to text size. Go back to the compound level and rename the texture map input node. This will automatically update the name of the corresponding slot. But what if you need to expose a parameter after you've already created the compound? For example, Maybe you want access to the UV channel index or the seed for the random color. Let's try it out. This map reads UV channel data and we want to expose its map channel slot. The slot is hidden. To show it, select the map and press H. That's the hotkey to toggle, hide unused node slots. Now click the input slot and drag it out into empty space. A menu will pop up. Choose expose as input parameter. This creates a texture map input node, and now that value is exposed on the compound. If nothing is connected to that slot, it will use the original value from the map inside the compound. To control the value, you need to connect a map to the compound. You can create a new map for the slot the same way. Just drag out from the slot into empty space, and a list of available maps will appear. Pick the one you want and it will be added. For random color variation, I'm using a Noise3D map. It doesn't have a seed parameter, but we can use the phase parameter instead. Expose the phase parameter just like we did with the UV channel parameter. Drag the slot into the empty space. Add a new float value OSL map to the slot. Now you can control the randomization. A compound works just like any other material or map. You can save it to a material library and load it from a library whenever you need it. So far we've made a compound with maps, but you can also create a compound material the same way. You might notice there is no output slot on the compound at first. Don't worry, you can expose an output slot the same way you expose an input. Just drag out from the output you want to expose. By default, the material name is used for the output slot name. You can change it by renaming the Material Output node. And you can drag and drop the Material Output slot onto objects to assign it just like any other material. Now you have a simple node with just the parameters you need. Alright, that's a wrap for compounds. 
Now let's move on to UI customization. Slate now lets you customize colors and menus. You might have already noticed, one of the wire colors looks different. Check this out. The node header color changes when I select a node, and the selection highlight is yellow too. Let's open up the Customize User Interface dialog. From the Elements drop-down, choose SME. Here, you can see I've changed the node header selected color and the node outline selected color. I also tweaked the wire of type text map with hidden output selector to a reddish color, just like how it looked in the old slate. The menu editor now supports slate too. In the edit menu drop-down, choose slate material editor. Let's search for material explorer and add it to the utilities menu. Press done and save the changes. Now you can access Material Explorer directly from Slate. Material Explorer is a scene explorer style tool for managing materials in your scene. I usually turn off display thumbnails to keep the list compact. You can select objects right inside Material Explorer and right click to select them in the scene. Just make sure Select Children is turned on. So when you simply pick a material from the list and right click, it grabs all the objects using that material. Next is the group feature in the material browser. It's not new, but a lot of users don't seem to know it's there. You can make a group from the Material Map Browser Options drop-down. It works like a bookmark or favorites list, letting you collect frequently used materials or maps for easy access. To add something, just drag and drop it into the group. If you're too far down the list, you don't have to drag it. Just right-click, choose Copy To, and pick a group. Also, the browser has a search bar, just like the modifier stack or create panel in 2026. Then you can use it just like any other material or map in the list. The group will be saved between Mac sessions, and you can also save it as a layout file along with your other browser list settings. Lastly, let's go over some mouse actions and hotkeys. Here, I have a slightly more complicated material tree. This map is connected to three other maps. Now. What if I want to add a color correction after this map for all connections? You definitely don't want to manually hunt down and reconnect everything. Instead, just drag the output slot from the color correction map onto the output slot of the map. All the connections from the map will automatically move to the color corrections output. Then you can connect the map to the color correction map. If you want to insert a map into an existing connection, just drag its output slot directly onto the line. If the map only has one input, it will insert automatically. If there are multiple inputs, a list will pop up so you can choose which one to connect. Also, if a map has only one output, like most max maps, you can drag from the input slot straight onto the connection line. Next, when making a connection, you can also drag to the node head instead of a specific input slot. This will pop up the input list. Personally, I find this easier than trying to hunt for a slot when the node is collapsed or the slots are hidden. If you want to delete a node but keep the connections, start dragging the node, then hold Alt and keep dragging. Remember, you have to start dragging first, then hold Alt, not the other way around. You already know you can drag out from an input slot to open the context menu. But if you prefer using the Material Map Browser, you can double-click an input slot instead. It'll open the browser, and the selected item will automatically connect. And did you know you can use Control Tab to cycle through tabs? And watch this carefully. While dragging from an output port, press Control Tab. Now you can drop it into another view. It is basically like copy and paste. If you choose to instance instead of copy, you will see a link icon appear in the header. If you add a checker map to this tree, it will also show up in the map in the other view since they are the same map. Or you can start with a shift drag to copy, then press control tab again and drop it into another view. Lastly, if you hold alt and drag from the output port of a material in the scene to another material's output port, it will swap them. In this video, we went over some recent updates to the slate material editor, like the new compound feature, UI customization options, and a few handy interaction tips. Hope you found the tutorial helpful. Thanks for watching.